Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us for today's discussion on improving M impact. Do accountability mechanisms work? Increasingly, we are being asked to be more accountable by our donor community. As an NGO community, we are looking at our work and asking ourselves, are we actually having the impact on the communities we are supposed to be benefiting? And thinking about the accountability mechanisms that we use to answer that question. And often it's a mix between morality, are we, you know, a moral imperative, but increasingly it is about efficiency and effectiveness. If we believe we have the right to take the money to work with these communities, then we have not just a moral imperative, but an economic and social imperative to ensure that we are being accountable. That the initiatives that we are implementing are actually having an impact and is beneficial to communities. And communities are telling us that it is beneficial enough to be sustainable and it is also beneficial enough for them to challenge their governments to deliver those same services. But accountability is not an easy thing to do. We can talk about it. It's very easy to do the basic mechanisms of accountability. Putting in a system for complaints, it's really easy to do, especially in the 21st century where most people have mobile phones. But what do we actually do with that information? It requires a real investment financial investment and people investment, which means we need a new dialogue when we are talking about accountability, both with our donor partners and with our communities. So in Save the Children, we recognize the importance of that investment, and that's why accountability is at the heart of our new program quality framework. And it's also why we actually make an um, a financial investment in working with our country offices to put in place the systems to ensure that we are improving accountability to the communities and children that we are working with. It would be very easy for me to sit here and say we've got it right. We haven't. If we had, we wouldn't be as interested in participating in this study as we did. We have a long way to go in Save the Children, like I'm sure most organizations will accept we do. We found out how to hear voices, but we still have a journey to go to ensure that those voices and the information we are receiving from our communities becomes an integral part of our program cycle and feeds into our dialogue with the international community more widely. So today, we are starting with a small number of case studies to look at how well a couple of NGOs are delivering on the accountability mechanism, um, Save the Children and Christian Aid. Um, and I was very pleased when I read the report because um, as some of my colleagues will tell you, my first question every time our, um, our mechanisms and data feedback comes in is, so what did we do with the data? And it was really reassuring to read what we were doing with the data in Myanmar. And I hope that it's a good study that we can replicate elsewhere. But alas, I'm a mere economist, and all I do is numbers. I'm rubbish when it comes to really taking qualitative data and using it effectively. But I'm joined today by an eminent panel who I know have really looked at the accountability uh, mechanisms and how effectively it's working. So we will start with a presentation from Andy Featherstone. Um, this is my first time of meeting Andy, so my sincere apologies <laughs> if I'm repeating um, Andy's bio to most people who know him quite well. So Andy is an independent research consultant with over 20 years experience of strategic and operational management in international program, policy and research work at country and headquarter level. He is a humanitarian policy and research, strategy, strategy development and support, learning and knowledge management expert. And when I read the bio, I thought, ooh, ooh. I wonder how I steal him. <laughs> That's what I, I wonder who that person is. <laughs> um, having been involved in the humanitarian um, sector for a number of years, Andy is the lead author on the research today. After Andy has presented, we will have um, a discussion from two colleagues 
Paul Knox Clark, who is the head of research and communications at ALNAP, which is a lead, um, leading the work on a range of issues related to evaluation, learning, and change within humanitarian organizations and the humanitarian system as a whole. <coughs> Paul began his humanitarian career working in the field of food and livelihood security with a particular focus on early work, early warning, sorry. His field work in Iraq, Sri Lanka, the Horn of Africa, Mali, and Afghanistan mixed research with emergency program design and management. His particular interest in, is in trying to understand how affected populations understood their livelihoods and the impact that emergencies had on these livelihoods. So I think from Paul, we will get a real sense of whether or not how we engage in accountability actually works from his personal experience. Then we have Nick Gutman from Christian Aid. Nick has worked in the humanitarian sector for over 25 years and has a significant experience at field and HQ and alliance levels. Nick is currently head of humanitarian division at Christian Aid and is chair of the consortium of British humanitarian organizations and a board member of HAP. He is also a member of the JSI advisory group. He has previously served on the board and executive committee of the ACT Alliance and at Christian Age, since 2001, he has led the emergency response from the organization in over 50 emergencies across the world. That's quite. So as you can see, we have a very eminent panel joining us. So instead of me talking about what I think accountability should be about, I will leave it to um, Andy to um, present his findings. <laughs>